Hi there, I'm Beth. A while ago I bought an extra one of these rubbery domes for Blythe. I wasn't sure which doll it'd be for, but my plan was to try doing a reroute with natural fibre. You can see me disassembling my Blythe Akemi, who usually wears wigs over her bald head. I did check the dome shape on the super cheap Blythes you can get, but it didn't match them. The dome I have has these longer flaps, which fit into a hard plastic shell. I later bought some sheep's fleece locally at a craft fair. It's labelled Lincoln Long Wool Pooled Locks and it cost £5 for 45 grams. The seller is a lady I know called Zoe from fleece for You. She keeps her own rare breeds of sheep and sources fleece from her friends too. She loves to share and craft with their fibres, so do check her out on Facebook. Her link is in the description. My plan is to carefully brush out the locks, straighten them a little, separate them into small bunches and not the ends, to be plugged into the scalp. Here are the tools I'm starting with. My smallest crochet hook, 1.25mm, scissors, a wire pet brush and some hair straighteners. I'll be careful to keep track of which direction the hair is facing and hold on tight as I brush. one end round my finger to try to minimise the hair loss and I switch back and forth brushing each end in towards the middle. I want to recommend another channel if you plan to try this yourself. Eleanor Clancy. She has lots of helpful videos about rerouting which gave me the confidence to try it myself. Her link is also in the description. Once it feels detangled, I use the straighteners to smooth it out. I'm only processing a little section at a time since it feels easier to handle. trimmed the uneven ends from the roots end of the bundle and will now take little sections, tying two knots near the roots end to secure it. I'm rolling the hair as I knot it and then I trim the excess fairly close to the knot but not too close in case the knot loosens enough to come undone. Now I'll just repeat these steps until I have a decent pile of knotted hair. Now I'll just Ready repeat these steps until I have just repeat these steps. Now I'll just repeat these steps. Repeat these steps. Three days later. Next, I decided to paint the mismatched border around my dome, since the lighter skin color on the bottom there doesn't match my Blythe, although the rest does. Only the bottom rim will remain fully visible, but what I should have done after is paint the upper part of the dome the same colour as the hair to help it look nicer in the end. I left that to dry and later returned to find somebody had taken an interest in my hair bundles. 
I suspect she was trying to lick them. Is this you? Huh? Did you do this? Are you trying to eat that hair? With my bundle tidied up, I'll start poking holes in the scalp. I'll use a teeny tiny drill bit to start with in my Dremel tool. You can use any sharp pointed tool though, and you'll see me try various things later. The drill is much smaller than the hook. We don't want knots to be able to pass through the holes. I've roughly marked four close rows from the centre front of the dome to a point past the centre top of the dome. These rows will make the parting and will be thatched or crisscrossed. With my holes made, I poke the hook through, twist the knot end of the hair over my finger and hook it before carefully pulling through to the other side. I'm very slow to start, and awkward. I think it's a good idea to make only a few knotted bundles to start with, as mine varied in size, and I had to double up some as they were far too small. I began plugging in the two centre rows, holding the strands from the left row over to the right, and strands from the right hand row to the left. This gives a crisscross or thatched parting, which covers more scalp and looks very neat. As I progressed, I used masking tape and later hair clips to help keep the sides separate. Here I filled in both centre rows and will now fill in the ones to the sides. These will follow the natural direction of the hair and be joined with their respective bunches. Here my initial parting line is filled in and looks pretty good I think. Following the advice in Eleanor's video, I'll root the rest of the head in sections. I've marked in pencil the areas I'll separate, and we'll start by making the holes for the lower hairline, before filling in the rest more sparsely. I've actually done two rows close together there, to make it look fuller. I used an awl tool to make these holes since I discovered my drill bit can catch any loose hair inside the head and get tangled. That's the rest of that section filled in. I altered the closeness of the plugs in places making them denser around the parting and the hairline. I'll move on to the next section, but made a point of wrapping up the handle of my hook as it was hurting my hand with the repeated pressure. Here's what my scruffy holes look like. You can see the difference between the line of drill holes and the other all holes. Now I have just the back section to fill in, and I've been going back and forth between brushing and straightening hair, knotting bundles and plugging holes. I have these knotted and ready, and just this much raw fleece left. Will it be enough to finish my scalp? Here goes my last few plugs.
in a reroute that took me six days, only because it's the summer holidays and I've been out and about a lot. Hooray! In case you're curious about how much hair gets wasted, either from being too short to be caught in the knots or being trimmed off the root end, here's everything together in my mini wheelie bin. It won't really go to waste though. I'll use it to stuff soft toys with, I think. Well, here is my rerouted scalp, being test fit on my Blythe. The coloured scalp isn't too apparent, but I definitely should have painted it white. And the hair is very frizzy, so I'm going to gently wash and condition it to calm it and get the nice curls back. Once the hair was dry, I covered the knots on the inside with PVA glue to help secure them. My first knotted reroute isn't very pretty to look at, but we all have to start somewhere. While the glue dries, I decided to swap out two pairs of Akemi's eye chips. I just didn't like them as much anymore and I figured why not change them. I used the good old glue stick method and some irises I printed out along with clear plastic domes. Now she has a bright blue pair and a dark brown and purplish pair. It'll take a couple of days for the glue to dry, then I'll assemble her and try to tame the curls. Well, here she is. What do you think of her? I won't be in a hurry to do another reroute, but I was really happy with my bargain £5 head of real hair. Alpaca or mohair is much more commonly used for Blythe reroutes, but it is expensive. I have a new level of appreciation for the pre-rooted scalps that cost like £200 now, that's for sure. If you like this dress, stay tuned. I'll be sharing the pattern and tutorial for it soon. And if you've tried out one of my patterns and would like to be featured in a video, use the hashtag BethRamsdenCrafts on social media when you share your photos. If you enjoyed the video please leave a like, consider subscribing and take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye!